Well, good evening and welcome to Pass Around the Porch for June 8th, 2022. For those of us that live in this area of Randall and where I am serving right now with Mount Lebanon United Methodist Church and Love Cross United Methodist Church, today ends the school year. And at about this time, over at Randleman High School, they'll be starting the pomp and circumstance of the pro- 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 blah, 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 words are hard this evening procession of the graduates uh, inside because we've got some thunder boomers coming through, but uh, otherwise uh, it will be good um, as well as today as a eighth grade parent, I went to something that I have never participated in in my life, and that was an eighth grade graduation ceremony for my son, Jeremiah, who uh, brag on a little bit, uh, made uh, principal's list year long, and also uh, made, uh, they gave out awards, and he made highest percentage in his class for uh, social studies year year long, so a little bit of humble brag there for him, but uh, they didn't do eighth grade graduations and moving up ceremonies and such when I was in school, but I guess that's what they do now. So um, it was great to see all of the kids and all the families and all the support that was involved as I was just out um, running a couple errands and glanced over at the high school parking lot. And it was about as full as it, I've ever seen it, even on a football night. So uh, there's as many families and friends there uh, supporting their kids graduating as there were uh, the nights. Uh, hold on. The nights of the entire city coming together on uh, for a game of football. But anyway, back to where we are today. Uh, just a little uh, brief announcement. If I have to end um, abruptly, it is because it is looking very dark to the south, um, and it's because I'm trying to run for my life. But no, anyway, um, so I'm trying to save my phone from getting too wet. Uh, but here we are. Last week, we looked at the Pentecost and what that meant And what that means in our um, theological ideals of what it means to be a Christian. And next week, or this week, we look at the Trinity. Now, when we look at the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the Lord, Son, Holy Spirit, the Lord, Jesus, Holy Spirit... However you want to word it, we look at it in a theological aspect. See, the the Holy Spirit has now come because of Pentecost, which is actually a Jewish festival, which some would say we as Christians took over and made our own for the coming of the Holy Spirit. But that's a whole nother theological argument. But what we do have in Trinity Sunday is a Sunday in which we celebrate all beings of the Lord, the Lord. We celebrate Christ Jesus and we celebrate the Holy Spirit. Now you may say, well, don't we do that every Sunday? Don't we do that every time we gather when we look to our scriptures, when we look to our moments in space and time that we're celebrating that week or that particular time. And I would argue that oftentimes we forget one or more of the beings of the Trinity. Oftentimes we focus on Jesus or particularly in in the New Testament. And then in the Old Testament, so much of the time we function ourselves 
in the Lord, in the callings of the Lord, in the givings of the Lord, and even in Jesus' ministry, we may combine those two. But it's not until Trinity Sunday, and it's not until we look at all three beings of the Holy Spirit, the Lord, and Christ Jesus, that we can fully live into what we are called to as Christians. And what we are called to as Christians is to be in relationship, not just with one, not just with two, but with all three, three in one, as it is said. And when we are in relationship with the three in one, then we are in full relationship with the Lord. Because when we are in relationship with three in one, we are in relationship with the Lord, our God. We are in relationship with Jesus, the only begotten. And then we are in relationship with the Holy Spirit, the messenger of Jesus and the Lord. See, in the time of Jesus, Jesus was the messenger. In the time following Jesus, the Spirit is the messenger. But we oftentimes forget that in order to get that message, we must be in relationship. We must be in relationship to get that message. Each of us is in relationship. You wouldn't be here if you were not in, re- in some sort of relationship with the Lord and Savior, or the Lord, or Jesus, or the Holy Spirit. You you felt the Holy Spirit come down upon you, or you've had the water of the Spirit poured over you, or sprinkled over you, or you've embarked in a journey in which you have declared yourself a child of God, a child of Christ. A child of the loved. A beloved child of God. You've taken that step. And now we are called with this Sunday to take that step. And not only lean into what we are hearing. But lean into the actions that we are called to do. Each Sunday, I try to leave you with something to think about. Sometimes it's more prevalent than others. Sometimes it's more meaningful than others. And sometimes it's just something on the fringes. But in each and every one of those moments that I leave you with, each and every one of those think about this or challenge you to do this, I'm trying to deepen your relationship with the Trinity. Whether it be listen to what the Holy Spirit is blowing through you or through your community. Whether it is apply what you are hearing to do good in the world. Whether it is to simply just love each other And not worry about what party they are on, who they love, how they love, or how they function in this society. Instead, we're called by Jesus, called by the Lord, called by the Spirit. To do this for all of God's flesh. Remember in last week's scripture, it didn't say some flesh. It didn't say the selected few. It didn't say those that have taken upon Jesus Christ. The prophet Joel said the Holy Spirit will come down upon all flesh. That to me means we as Christians are supposed to love all flesh. 
doesn't mean we have to agree with all flesh. It doesn't mean we have to partake in the actions of all flesh. But it means we have to love all flesh. Because if God loves all flesh, and we are supposed to be in the image of God, then how can we not love each and every child of God, whether they know they are a child of God or not, whether they feel like a child of God or not, whether they embrace the fact that they are a child of God or not. Each and every human being that is created, according to our scriptures, is a child of God. And each and every human being that is in the flesh is a child of God. Because if the Word became flesh, the Word became Jesus. And if Jesus was flesh, then we are all flesh. There's a warning for us to uh, make sure we watch the skies a little closer. I don't know if you heard that on the live, but it's thundering here. <clears throat> so let's look at that. And let's take that to the next level. This Sunday in the Methodist calendar is also Peace and Justice Sunday. Now, we won't be directly um, celebrating that in the worship service as it may be, but it's something that we need to recognize with all that is going on in our world right now, that Jesus called for peace. Jesus called for justice. Jesus seeked out those that were deemed the throwaways, those that were deemed those that were not part of society, those that were separated from society because of how they looked, how they acted, what was happening in their lives, what was happening in their minds, what was happening with them physically. Jesus looked for those individuals. Jesus looked for those individuals and then included them in the ministry that was performed. Why do we not look like that as a church today? Now, I'm not saying our congregations particularly, but the church in general, Big C Church. Instead of seeking out those individuals, that are struggling, that are suffering, that are not felt welcome. In general, we as the church as a whole seem to push them away just as society did in the time of Jesus. Just as society did when Jesus was doing the ministry and the woman at the well, who wasn't supposed to be there at that hour, was was encountered. I'm sorry, I've got a dog that is trying to, again, join the live event. The woman that was hemorrhaging the unclean woman, Jesus went to her. The blind man, the lepers, the man who could not walk. Over and over, the demon possessed man. Over and over, Jesus looked and went to those that were shunned by society. Why are we not doing that as the church? Peace and Justice Sunday celebrates peace and justice for all. Peace and justice for all. And quite frankly, friends, there is not peace and justice for all in this world right now. Many, many individuals 
feel on the outside. They are not at peace with who they are, the image of God that they are. We as human beings do not have to condone, condemn, or condone, or like, or uh, encourage, or whatever word you want to use. But we, as the children of God, are called to love them in their authentic self. Their authentic self, the, the, that the Lord, our Savior, our Lord, the same Lord, has made them in the image of. Imagine yourself, just for a minute, being shunned by a society because of how you think. Imagine for a moment being shunned by society for who you love. Imagine for a moment being shunned by a society because who you hang out with. Guess what? That was Jesus. Jesus ate with the sinners. Jesus hung out with those that were looked at as the undesirables in society. He even would seek them out when going into new towns or new areas of ministry. And we can do that too. We can do that too as a community, as a church, as a people, as children of God, for we are the hands and feet of Jesus. And when we are the hands and feet of Jesus, we are charged to do what Jesus did, to seek those out those that are troubled, to seek out those who are suffering, to seek out those who are wanting more. And most of all, they are wanting more love. And that's something we can easily accomplish. Like I've said all evening, we don't have to like, we don't have to agree with, but we have to love each and every one of God's creation. And we have to call for peace. Peace in this world, peace in this nation, peace between each other. Our denomination is in a time of turmoil right now. As Methodists, our world is in a time of turmoil with racism, with gun violence, with xenophobia, with homophobia, with all of the Whatever, there's so much, I can't even list them all. Our nation is in a time of turmoil with our political system. Our nation is in a time of turmoil with neighbors and violence, and I just don't know what we can do to get to the next step. But what I do know is that if we follow the Spirit, if we allow ourselves to be vulnerable, if we allow ourselves to be moved by the Spirit, and not just hear what the Spirit's telling us as the messenger of the Lord, but follow through on those messages. To follow through on what we are called to do, where we are called to go. Things can change. And it's not going to change overnight. And it's not going to change with a single person doing a single thing. But those single things add up. 
a single people add up to now that's a whole community or group. A single people with that idea move each other to the next level. The single ideas, the single messages from the Lord move an entire world. Think about if Jesus had shrugged off going to that well. Think about if Jesus had shrugged off going to the house of the menstruating woman. Think if Jesus had shrugged off and didn't put and ran away and hid when Pontius Pilate was putting him on trial. Think about that. Think if Jesus ran. Whoa, sorry. That was a little close. Think if Jesus had done that and avoided the crucifixion. Where would we be now? Can't answer that because Jesus didn't do that. So it's our job. It's our turn to do as Jesus did. To love all. To seek out those in trouble. And to ensure that our communities know who Christ is. Are exposed to Christ. And see Christ in each and every one of us each and every day. And given the fact that that lightning was right across the street we're going to uh call this an evening and uh with a short real short prayer and uh we'll see you on sunday lord jesus please continue to guide us continue to send your holy spirit down upon us and guide us each and every day to allow us to see feel and be who you want us to be each and every day i ask this in your son your name your lord's name and the holy spirit And may the Holy Spirit come down upon each and every one of us, each and every moment of each and every day. Amen. Peace to you, my friends. Peace to all. Be safe. And please say a little extra prayer for Wayne Coward if you are, wow, that one was close again, in the uh, Mount Lebanon community as uh, he's still continuing uh, some health battles. And continue just to pray for our nation and our world as we try to figure out what the next steps are. I'm going inside before I get soaking wet. I love you all. Peace, but do not go to pieces. Amen.